And um, thank you very much. Um, so I'm delighted to, before we have lunch, to have a chat now with Simone Casal, the director of Somos Gay. Could you give him a round of applause? I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hello. Great. Hi. Thank you so much for being with thank us today. You. No, thank you for the invitation. No, well, so a brief bit of trivia before we start. Yeah. So in 2012, The Economist had a cover called The Gay Divide. And inside, we had several pictures. Yeah. One of them was of you and your husband getting mm. married. Yeah, that, right? in Argentina, yes. Yes, yes. So, um, and you didn't, you didn't know about this, though? No, time. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, who lives in New York casually and yeah. sent me the picture and was like, are you aware of this? Yes, it's a lovely photo. You're coming out of the doors and yeah. the uh, rice is being thrown. Right, yeah. yes. So, so there we are. So Simon, Hans, you have a connection with The Economist. You didn't know yes. us. So. No, I, I didn't knew that, yeah. but when I learned, yes. Great. It is a personal connection with The okay. Economist. Well, thank you so much. For no, today. thank you. So I want to start okay. by what's happening in Paraguay and sort of what's the sort of political situation on the ground, so LGBTQI. Yeah, well, for those who didn't, who doesn't know where Paraguay is, it's a very little country in the, it's a real country, the first, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> uh, we have two countries in South America who has very similar names. We usually get confused with Uruguay, which is uh, our, like, a good brother. <laughs> it's a very progressive country, Uruguay. Mine is like the, the black mirror of that. Uh, is a very conservative one. Uh, we are a landlocked country uh, next to Brazil and Argentina. Uh, our people is very proud about being considered the, the moral reserve of the world in which the gay rights and the abortion and feminists, of course, we don't have place there. Uh, the, the, the country itself is very conservative until now. Uh, we, we had, we had the, the longest uh, dictatorship in place in, in the 70s and through the 80s. And the, the, the ruling party is the same one from the dictatorship. The new president in place is, the, is a, 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 a supporter of the dictat that dictatorship, actually. And uh, his dad was uh, the, 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 the right hand of the dictator. So you can picture the, <laughs> the background there. Uh, it's not an, a, a gay-friendly, LGBTI-friendly place to live. Uh, so the, we are kind of a mixed, uh, a mixed organization on grassroots on the old school, but with new uh, technology. Yeah. So we, we try to bring those both uh, strategies together, and that kind of the the the. the I think innovative approach that some of you is using. Do you think the attitudes um, on the ground are changing? Sort of yes. Among generations? And things? Yes. Uh, it's a very clear divide between the political ruling class and the society as a whole. Uh, of course, if you are going to follow the, the conversations on Twitter or, <laughs> or Facebook as, as much uh, as the other people say before, you are going to have a, a bias. Uh, idea about the country. In the ground, the, the society is changing uh, faster than the political and, 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 and the political environment can respond to. So that kind of plays a, a, is a, is a double-sided uh, uh, sword, if you want to call it. Because on one hand, the, 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 the conservatives get very scared about the, 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 you know, the, the, the changes that are coming to them. And, in, and they, of course, control the, the political uh, structures. So they use that to try to stop it. Mm. But at the, in the other hand, the, the society is, uh, as a whole is moving forward. So it is a clash between the, it's a very clear clash between the, uh, the, the political uh, establishment and the society as a whole. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, I was say that I was saying that it was that's good, but the the, the downside is that the the violence is becoming more and more increasingly uh, uh, you know uh, visible. Mm. Uh, before this new time, it was very symbolic, or I don't know. We we don't have a homophobic laws or or in place, and homosexuality was never uh, illegal. 
but uh, the, the tradition and, and the, 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 the social values are very conservative, very Catholic, uh, rooted conservative. So the, the, we don't have laws because society as a whole used to be very homophobic, so they, they, they just punish you for being gay without uh, the need uh, of the enforce of a law, of the enforce of the, of the state on that, that matter. But, but you met the, the current Pope in 2015, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and he's recently m been reported to have made comments that seem yeah. to be quite um, sort of m a bit more accepting than the news. I mean, do you feel hope that the, 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 the sort of Catholic countries will, 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 will change? Uh, well, Catholic countries are very curious in one thing. Uh, for those who are Catholic, you know, we... I was raised as a Catholic, uh, but the, the, the church itself has a lot of division with, uh, inside them. So the, the, the Pope is not a, 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 locally in my country, the, uh, most of the bishops are against the Pope, actually, because of their, his uh, apparently progressive views. Uh, but for those of us who know him, because we know him, he is from Argentina and we fought him on the <laughs> on the marriage equality uh, fight there uh, a few years back, and when he was bishop there, it was very terrible uh, against the the LGBTI movement. So it's very hard to believe him mm -hmm. actually, because all these little signs that he 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 does in the media are accompanied at the same time by by a porch in the in the uh, internal structure of the of the church. For example, in my country. Uh, it was uh, it, it, it's just recently this year he uh, well the Jesuits which are uh, the, the representative of the Pope there uh, kind of went through a, a progressive porch on their schools and on their structure a very public uh, priest that was that, that were very progressive uh, 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 for LGBTI community are now being sacked. From the, from the job, so it's very confusing. But in the media debate, it's very useful uh, to have this kind of signs because nobody knows the, the, you know, that kind of internal struggles and stuff. But in, in, in the public debate, it's very important, and yes, we are using those kind of uh, sign, uh, signs that he, he, he draw there yeah. to you know, advance our, our discussions. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it helps to build bridges with people that are usually very close-minded uh, uh, about LGBTI issues. How much does the, the economy in, 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 in sort of Paraguay and other Latin American countries, how does that affect being an advocate in the sort of, uh, sort of the political climate? For uh, a lot, yeah. actually. Uh, Latin America is a very unequal uh, region. We have the, the booming uh, economies there uh, with, well, not so boom, booming right now, but you have Brazil there, you have Mexico there, you have, well, Chile there, uh, Colombia, Peru, but at the same time, you have this horrendous poverty all over the, the countries. So th that, that inequality keeps room to uh, very little discussion around rights, actually. If you don't have uh, money to eat, is very difficult to engage in political discussions. So uh, that, that room that uh, the inequality there, the, the economic inequality there uh, lives there, uh, is being used by other actors that exploit that poverty, exploit that vulnerability to you know, push an agenda. And one of the main actors in that field are, are the evangelical, uh, evangelical parties, evangelical churches. Uh, we have been a witness of a, a, a lot of backlash, very strongly financed by the evangelical movement uh, to you know, uh, bring down the, 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 the separation between state and, and religion. That was, uh, for us, uh, it was a, like, like a very strong uh, conquest from, uh, from the pro progressive political side. But in the, in the, in the, few, in the past few years, we have been increasingly seeing uh, the, the, the eruption in the, in the political uh, scene of uh, pastors and, and preachers 
uh, who, uh, as the, the Vice President of Costa Rica just, just told you this morning, uh, almost uh, won uh, 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 the, the round in Costa Rica, which is the, the longest democracy, the strongest democracy in Latin America. And you have the, the, the case of Brazil, in which they have, Brazil has 5,000 murders uh, of LGBTI people in the last 10 years. 5,000 is a lot. And most of them are related to uh, evangelical preachers who uh, call upon violence, direct violence against our communities. Uh, so th that, that being said, the, again, follow the money. <laughs> the evangelicals ha had a lot of money, and that money is coming from here, actually. They, they feel that, like the, the, the war, the sacred war that they, they are fighting for family and children is already lost in the United States, so they basically are moving the money to uh, other countries like uh, in Latin America and, and in Africa. We have like very, very clear examples of that. So uh, I, in that regard, again, social inequality is directly connected to that kind of disruptions uh, against, uh, against democracy as, as, as a whole. Not only LGBTI movements, the fight that we are fighting now is for democracy, uh, is for, for free, free democracies, actually. Uh, people around the, 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 our countries are losing faith on the, the democratic system because of the, this kind of, if, if, if democracy doesn't change your day-to-day -day life, it's hard to uh, uh, you know, buy into it. Uh, so it's a, it's a very dangerous uh, trend so that we're seeing. What, what more can be done? I mean, how could grassroots movements be funded, for example? I mean, sort of how, how could you... I mean, someone earlier in a different panel made the point that, um, you know, homophobia hits the poorest hardest. Yep. I mean, what you're saying here seems to suggest that poverty makes it hard to, to sort of eradicate yep. homophobia at the same yep. time. So, so what can be done? Well, the, there's a lot of things that we, can be done. We have, uh, at the same time in which we, we are facing these challenges across the region, we have a lot of advancement in, in some places, like as I, as I mentioned in Uruguay, they have, uh, by law, they, they, are, they, they, are, they already legalize abortion, uh, marijuana, and of course, uh, gay rights as a whole, uh, identity, uh, gay marriage, blah, blah, blah. So they are a very progressive country, and they are a very progressive society. Uh, we have the, the same uh, legal advancement in Argentina and in Mexico as well. So one of the ways that uh, we are trying to uh, change this, this trend is to uh, uh, str uh, make, make stronger bonds between South-to-South -South cooperation. What, what works in Mexico could work in Peru, could work in Venezuela. It's easier for us to uh, e uh, you know, exchange ideas, strategies, and, and, and resources within, within the, the South to South, if you want to call it, uh, cooperation that uh, in the other way. It's not so much useful to approach this as a North, north to South uh, conversation. Oh, really, so you couldn't learn from campaigns in the US or? Yeah, in, uh, you could, but uh, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's more removed from the reality on uh, the region because of all the, 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 the difference, not only cultural or, or, or you know, aesthetics, if you want to call it, uh, but more profound about, uh, you know, it's, it's easier. If you have a strategy that works in a Catholic environment, we already proved that can work in another. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, you know, support is very important. And the other, the other support is, well, you have a lot of companies here. <laughs> you have uh, work in the field. You have offices in our countries. You have uh, access to politicians. You have access to diplomatics. You have access to a lot of the, the local powers uh, there. So it's another, it, it has another, your voice has more relevance for them than ours. They don't see us as more important. They are very colon colonial in, in, that kind, in that mindset. So oligarchs in Latin America are more keen to listen to corporations or to 
uh, you know, banking or financial institutions that then uh, to listen to even democratic institutions as our congresses or our organizations. So using your voice strategically, I'm losing my, my English, uh, to, to advance our agenda or to support us in the, in the field is very important. The other way to support us is to enforce your LGBTI friendly policies in our countries. Uh, that's, that's kind of uh, ironic, but <laughs> I was listening uh, about Intel, and we have an uh, a office in Intel in, in Brazil, and it's very conservative. Really? So yeah, and it, it is the same for the other ones. Uh, it, it, it happens the same with the banking or even uh, other, like American Airlines, you know, it's very supportive of Pride events, uh, globally, blah, 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 but locally, they are like muted so, on LGBTI. So the kind of that model that we discussed earlier today, I don't know if you were here for the earlier sessions, but from going from being not when in Rome to yeah. embassy, but to advocate. That's to advocate. You, that's what you push for, yeah. Yes, that, that will be very, uh, that, that's critical for us. Uh, the, the embassy approach is not enough okay. uh, at all. Uh, it's not enough at all. Uh, you have a lot of power. Uh, the, economic, the, the economy, of course, has a lot of power, but you have a lot of power that you can use for good. And, and that will be our plea. Uh, please do not leave us in the ground alone. Uh, we can, it, it sounds romantic, you know, to give space to the grassroots and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but if the grassroots are starving, <laughs> being persecuted, and brutally repressed, it's very hard to have, to have your voice rise up and up to, the, uh, to, the, to the political or to the powers that, uh, that there. Yeah. So, That's a powerful yeah. line to end on. I'm sorry that we don't have more sorry. time. Um, no, no. Um, so before I ask you to thank Simon, I want to just say two things. So you're going to be going for lunch, uh, but mentors, you're to follow the hall to the couches. Um, I think it's that way. Uh, and the second thing is, is that this was not on the list, I think, at the beginning, because it was a late edition. But we're delighted that later on we have Nico Tor Tortorella, an a actor and activist, who will be speaking later today. So please do stick around for that. Um, so please give a warm round of applause and then have a lovely lunch. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, so thank much. you again.